In 1902, in Russia, there appeared one of them, probably one of the most important pamphlets ever published in modern history. Its title was Sto de Lot, which translates in English, the common translation is what is to be done. You could translate it other ways, but that, that sort of encapsulates it. You know, where are we going? What is to be done? Quo vadis, you could almost say in Latin. Uh, its author was this guy, N. Lennon. Now that caused a lot of misunderstanding over the decades. People thought Lennon's name must be Nikolai because it said N. N's just a designator that the name it follows is a pseudonym. It's not his real name. His real name was uh, Vladimir Ilyich Ulyanov. Uh, likewise, Stalin was it was Joshua, Joseph uh, uh, Vissarionovich Dugashvili. Trotsky was Lev Davidovich Bronstein. They all had these pseudonyms that they used. Stalin's earlier pseudonym was actually Koba, which is it's kind of interesting. But I actually used that. I used that for years. When I was a chair of a department, I would sign my name Koba. And nobody knew what I was talking about. I mean, these people really, they may have PhDs, but they don't know a lot of history. They certainly, even though they were progressives and lefties, they, they didn't know a lot about their own, their own leftism. But that's a whole other story. Uh, but in this book, Lenin lays out the groundwork for what's going to come. He starts talking about this ideal of a dictatorship of the proletariat. And why he comes to that conclusion, I think is relevant to where we see ourselves today in the United States. And let me explain that. Now, I'm not comparing, I'm not suggesting we establish a dictatorship of the proletariat and seek a communist takeover of the government. Uh, in fact, that's, I think the problem we're facing is that's where we're headed. So my solution to the problem we face is 180 degrees from Lenin's. But the problem as that he mapped out in that pamphlet, I think is relevant to the situation we face today. The problem he saw in Russia was a system that he, he had great distaste for. It was an autocratic system. The czar of Russia wasn't just a czar, a kaiser, a Caesar. He was an autocrat. Basically, everything was controlled by him directly or indirectly through his ministers. And this is, remember, this is 1901. This is before even the Duma, which is established after the revolution in 1905, which itself was worthless in any event and didn't really change anything. And Lenin's trying to figure out, well, what do we do? There's no process for change. The situation isn't going to change. It hadn't changed from the predecessor of Nicholas II, the current czar, Alexander III, his father. Lenin's brother, Alexander, <laughs> was one of the ringleaders in a plot to assassinate Alexander III on the anniversary of the assassination of his father, Alexander II. It failed. He was caught and he was hanged. And if you want to understand what's making Lenin tick a lot of the times, you know, when he wipes out uh, the Tsar's family uh, after the revolution, keep in mind the Tsar's father had executed his brother. I mean, th there's certainly a personal aspect to all this, but that's more or less beside the point. Facing this situation, Lenin doesn't see any way out. Nothing's going to change. There's no prospect in Russia that this autocratic system is going to reform itself or change or head in any other direction. There have been some reformation actually before Nicholas II. There have been a gradual, you know, serfs have been released, freed, if you want to call it that. Other things had changed. But under Nicholas, nothing was changing and nothing would continue to change, even despite the formation of the Duma after the revolution. And you know, right up to the, the revolution itself. I mean, Nicholas just was a, an autocrat. And the worst thing you can have in, a, in a, a government, a state run by an autocrat, is to have a moron as the autocrat, which is basically what Nicholas II was. He wasn't one of the brightest people in Europe. And here he has all this responsibility running this huge empire of 170 million souls as they the Russians used to refer to as their people, souls. But what does this have to do with us? We're in a similar situation today, like it or not. 
if we look at the American Republic as it's mutating and right in front of our eyes, really rapidly, I mean, just, just this week, think about how you viewed what was happening two weeks ago and how you view it today, how fast things are happening. Parlor getting shut down, people being banned left and right uh, on on social media. Calls to you know close, shut down Fox News. I mean, if you carry this, the direction is going. When we get to the next election, what sources of information will still be around for people, other than the left wing media, left wing social media? Where else can you go? Nowhere. And if you combine that with allegations of voting irregularities, I won't use the other word because it picked up in the algorithm, where do we go? And I think the question Lenin asked in 1902 was valid for conservatives in the, in the United States today. What is to be done? What are our options if this, in fact, trend continues? And I see no reason to think it's not going to continue. They're not even in power yet. Biden hasn't even been inaugurated. And look at what's happening. What do you think? It's going to get better after he's inaugurated? Social media is going to stop clamping down? They're going to calls for getting rid of Fox News are going to end? Do you really believe that? Have you ever talked to a progressive and what they think they're going to get done over the next four, eight, ten years, however you want to add it up? So what is to be done? What are the options? Option one, pretty simple. Can't beat them, join them. Re-register as a Democrat. When it comes to the time, you know, there's a neighborhood organization where you spy on each other's neighbors, make sure you're a part of it. Maybe you can get to be the head of the neighborhood watch organization where you can inform on your friends who, you know, I was at a barbecue and Jack, you know, Jack's smoking a cigar and he's white and he said something disparaging about uh, uh, trans left-handed African-American trans women. You know, this, this, this needs to be stopped. Or, or, you know, you can go around and, and find neighbors that have, you know, uh, American flags in front of their houses and, you know, inform them they need to be taken down. They're offending people. Or if this guy's got a Marine Corps flag hanging in front of his house near me, let him know. That's got to go. You know, we can't have this in our neighborhood. You could do that. That would be one option. And in situations like that, you know, Stalinist Russia, uh, Hitler, Germany, Hitler, Larry in Germany. That's what people do. You know, join in. I can play the game too. I can do it better than you can. And probably you could. Some of these people aren't that bright. Option two, go underground, go silent. I don't mean underground, revolutionary underground. I just mean, keep your mouth shut. Get off Twitter, get off Facebook. Get off parlor. Get off anything else you're on. Don't post anything on social media. Don't open your mouth. Never talk politics. Never often and offer an opinion about anybody on the left, any of the leaders, any of the movements. Don't say anything. Talk about the weather. Talk about sports. Talk about what a, a wonderful, charismatic person Joe Biden is. He's the most charismatic politician we've seen since Barack Obama. He's so charismatic, he got 9 million more votes. What a guy. What a trooper. I just wish I could like be in a pool with him and rub his leg hair. I mean, it, 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 it sent a thrill up my spine. And that Kamala Harris, so I don't even want to go there. Anyway, that would be another option. The third option is what you might call the Lenin option. What did Lenin suggest? <laughs> Revolution. Lenin suggested the formation of a vanguard, what would become the, pro the uh, dictatorship of the proletariat. 
you know, a, a extreme revolutionary group purged regularly so it didn't get soft to lead the revolution. That was his option. Now, I'm not suggesting you go out and do that. But if that happens, you might want to get involved. I can't speak for anybody. I'm not recommending anything. But these basically are your three options. You either play along, you keep your mouth shut, or you join the revolution. Whatever shape it's going to take in the future. I mean, that was the option back at the time of the American Revolution. You played along, you were a royalist, a Tory, you kept your mouth shut, you just kept quiet, or you joined one of the patriotic groups and you got involved in ultimately what became an effort to overthrow British imperial control in the American colonies. That's it. That is, those are really your options. I'm not suggesting one over the other. We're all going to have to choose, I think, over the next decade, which way we want to play it. Become a Tory? A progressive? Lay low? Go underground. Deep underground. That's it. Those are really the only alternatives if things continue to go the direction that they're going. And I think they, they are. They're not going to change. Things aren't going to get better. Things are going to get worse. And that's the unfortunate situation that we find ourselves in. And each of us is going to have to value, make a value judgment about, you know, how, how we're going to respond to this situation. But I would remind you, and I'm sure a lot of people will just, you know, sign up, become a progressive, play it that route. Other people, most people will, will lay low. But, you know, I posted a video a while back. I'll link to it here. You know, history is made by minorities. The Bolsheviks are the perfect example. When they took over Russia, staged their coup in October 1917 by the old calendar and November by our current calendar, there were probably not more than 2,500 Bolsheviks on the ground in Petrograd when they had the revolution. In a country of 170 million people, there were 2,500 people that overthrew it. The same is true in the American Revolution. At best, a third of the population considered themselves patriots. The Nazis, Nazi party at its height, as I pointed out in that video, never got above 11% party membership among the German people. They were a distinct minority. The Jacobins were a dis distinct minority. History's driven by minorities. You don't need a mass movement. You don't need 75 million people to do what Lenin did from another political angle. And just keep that in mind. I'm not calling for revolution. Don't get me wrong. I'm not suggesting we should have a revolution, but I'm saying whatever is coming, don't expect that it will have to be driven by, you know, some huge majority, majoritarian movement. You don't need a majoritarian movement to change history. And it's good to understand Lenin because the people you're confronting understand Lenin. And if you're going to beat them, you've got to beat them at their own game. So what do you think is to be done? What is to be done? Let me know in a comment. You can share this video with your friends, give it a thumbs up, hit the notification button so you know when I post new videos, subscribe to the channel, and until the next time, keep fighting.